Well, welcome to St. Paul's Thanksgiving Eve devotional. I'm going to be leading us through a little bit of a Australian walkabout. I know, I know it's not a holiday that they would celebrate in Australia, but the idea of walkabout, we're going to walk about the campus a little bit today. But we're here, though, also to get us kicked off for Thanksgiving. So what better way than to stand here and see the little kids? They've got their set kind of put up around here and all ready to go for their Thanksgiving play. This is not part of it. I brought him with me. That's my dinner for Thanksgiving. Actually, it'd be kind of a dusty, dry bird, I would suppose. But, you know, that's part of Thanksgiving. Just like football is, turkey day, absolutely. Stuffing, mashed potatoes, whatever other kind of things that are a part of your meal and your tradition that you have the opportunity to sit around and celebrate. The gathering of family around a table. All those are good things, just like we have these school traditions of the kids play and an opportunity for us to pause, to say thanks to God for all the things that he has done. And so we're going to walk through some of our history and what God has done and what God is doing. As we are reminded of those things, we reflect on our own life and see how God is working in our life. So let's go ahead and open with prayer and a benedict, or a, not a benediction, an invocation. Father in heaven, we thank you for the turkey that we will have on our table, the food, the family, the opportunity to celebrate Thanksgiving. Here in this country, it's a very well-known tradition and just about everybody takes part in it. So Lord, as we gather, Help us to be reminded of the gifts that you give us. And we make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, so we're out in front of the church right now, and you can see the, the uh, terrible tower that has always leaked, but hasn't lately, since we've got uh, some work done on it behind me. I want to read from the letter of 2 Corinthians that Paul writes and we're going to break this up through as I move around and take us on that little walkabout. It says this, Word of God, There's no need for me to write to you about the service to the Lord's people. For I know your eagerness to help, and I have been boasting about it to the Macedonians, telling them since last year you in Achaia were ready to give, and your enthusiasm has stirred most of them to action. But I am sending the brothers in order that our boasting about you in this matter should not prove hollow, but you may be ready, as I said you would be. For if any Macedonians come with me and find you unprepared, not to say anything about you, would be ashamed of having been so confident. So I thought it necessary to urge the brothers to visit you in advance and finish the arrangements for the generous gift that you have promised. Then it will be ready as a generous gift, not as one grudgingly given. When I first read that, I couldn't help but reflect a little bit on Hebrews 10, where we hear these words. Let us consider how we may spur one another towards love and good deeds. Again, let us consider how we may spur one another towards love and good deeds. You know, back in 1912, People gathered together, people that were interested in God's Word, that were interested in gathering to sing, to pray, to have the opportunity to have Bible study, and to have fellowship with one another. And out of that, and that leadership, and those dedicated people, this church was built, St. Paul Lutheran Church, the first spot that it was ever in in Lakeland. From that church, eventually, they moved to what is fondly known amongst those who were around that time as 3020. That was the address over on South uh, Florida Avenue. That building's still there, it's a stone building. And that was leadership that stepped up, that wanted to expand the reach of God in this community. And then back in 1964, the school was started. 
but now we reside here at 4450 Hardin Boulevard. A new church was built and again, courageous leadership stepped forward. People who had the opportunity to just come together and wanted to be spurring each other on towards the good deeds and towards loving one another in this community. It's not unlike the sacrifices that were made by the church that Paul was writing to. The Macedonians, the people in Corinth, and other communities and cities around, those Christians were coming together. They wanted to hear more about the Word of God. They wanted to take care of each other. They wanted to give because they had been given so much and they understood, especially the Corinthians, how much they had been given. They weren't always believers. There was a time when the people in Corinth mainly worshiped a couple goddesses, the goddesses of the fields and the goddesses of those of the harvest. And that's where they thought all their good gifts would come from or their destruction would come from. But now they knew better, just as we know better today. But they gathered together to raise money, to have the opportunity to bless others because they themselves we're so blessed and so thankful for God to God for the gifts that they have been given. As you can tell, we've got a lot of traffic noise here on Harden. Cars coming by, plane flying overhead. That's all right. That's the busyness of the world. Just as it was busy in their day, life is busy in our day. But there's always time to stop and to give thanks, especially in this time especially now, because it's a busy life now, and it was a busy life then. Then, the people in Jerusalem were in the middle of a famine, and that's gonna lead us to our next stop on our walkabout. So, join me at our next spot. So you should recognize this truck. It's on the property every Sunday morning. Maybe you've helped work out of the back of this truck and serve people. You know, in a bold move, we shut down our food bank here, the brick and mortar food bank some years ago. And out of that desire to serve, out of that desire that we hear there from, from the book of Hebrews to let us consider how that we may spur on one another towards love and good deeds, Moving Hope was founded. And it's been a blessing to the community. You know, and we give a lot of food, and right now you can hear the refrigeration unit running. This truck is full of food, food that was bought and purchased and some food that was donated. Publix has been a great part of donating food, but other food we have to buy. And yet this ministry continues, but it has never been strictly about food. As you see on the side of the truck, moving hope is about bringing hope into neighborhoods. It's about dignity and treating people with dignity. It's about forming and building relationships with one another. It's about going in and serving. And even all that, if that was it and that just stood alone, it's not enough. Because it's really all tied, hope, serving, relationships, dignity, to Jesus. And so when Moving Hope goes out, to serve food, to give food away to places that have financial insecurity as well as insecurity or food insecurities. It's there to be the hands and the feet of Jesus in those communities. You know, when it started, it started with one spot, one place. Only one place would let us set up. Now we're in seven areas. You know, last month, the month of October, they gave over 20, or they, excuse me, they served over 2,800 households. 2,800 households in one month from those seven sites that range from here in Lakeland all the way over to Plant City. Serving people and showing them the love of Jesus. This is what the Macedonian and the Corinthian Christians wanted to do, and they're giving to Jerusalem that was in the midst of a famine, of food insecurity and financial insecurity. We are acting that out modernly today. 
You know, Paul continues in that letter to Corinthians with these words, starting with verse 6. Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver, and God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things, hear that word, all, and at all times, and having all that you need, there's three alls there in a, in a row, Paul's pointing something very special there out, in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. And then he quotes a psalm with these words. They have freely scattered their gifts to the poor. Their righteousness endures forever. So it's time to move on to our next stop. But before I do, I really want to thank you for your support of Moving Hope. A separate 501c3, but a ministry of St. Paul Church into this community and a ministry that more and more is being embraced and supported by the whole community of Lakeland and Plant City. All for Jesus. So thank you for your gifts and your giving this Thanksgiving. Let's move to our next spot. Well, now we're in the school library in the midst of a book fair. So you see books all over the place. Not just the ones on the shelf, but ones for sale. I, I just heard as we were walking here, one of the teachers say that uh, a grandparent had come to the teacher and told the teacher that if any of the kids didn't have money to get a book, to buy them the book and he would repay. Well, wow, that's really a cool gift. Reading is so important. So are all the things that are taught in school. You know, our school was established in 64, over there at 3020, the first spot, and then moved over here to 4450, where we're at now. And God has continued to bless, and we should be thankful for the blessings that we see around us. You know, that school started, the stories that I heard, it was just a couple people on staff, and they did everything, principal, teacher, custodian, whatever needed done, it got done. They operated on a shoestring budget. Now, where are we at? We've got about 70 on staff between the church and school both. We have over 500 kids enrolled in the school that each day we get to share Jesus with Monday through Friday. What a blessing. What a thing to pause and thank God for. You know, those people that started that school there in the early days, they really lived by that Hebrews 10 text that says, let us consider how we can spur one another forward, right? In love and in good deeds. And that text, how we heard from Paul writing that they sowed generously and they reaped generously. Th those early frontier, cutting edge people that decided we needed a school in Lakeland, a, a Christian Lutheran school, were the ones who really didn't hold back in any way, shape, or form, but so generously without knowing how it would turn out, and we have reaped the benefits of it. And we still reap the benefits of it. Today, we still sow generously and we reap generously. And it's all due to God's work, His unchanging love, His care for us, and, and His transformation of hearts, of the kids, of the parents, and all who gather here in the school for whatever event it is, as well as those that gather in the church, those who've entrusted their kids to us to help educate is just a witness to God and His faithfulness. We sow generously, we reap generously because of Jesus. You know, I would continue to encourage you to be thankful to God 
for this ministry that we have. Paul to the Corinthians continues in that text with these words. Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion and through us your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. I have been here now for a few years. This year, what a difference, because the kids are back in school. But what a difference it has been. I can't, I've lost track. I, I, I tried to find out today, a little late, how many baptisms we've had of people that are having that opportunity to come in through the school. And you're gonna hear kids moving around here, and that's part of school, and that's good, so it's fine. Just ignore the noise in the background and maybe somebody who photobombs the camera, whatever it might be. But just remember that God has increased, as Paul wrote, his store of seeds for his kingdom work and has enlarged the harvest of righteousness. You know, when these kids finish up here, assuming they go all the way through eighth grade, or even if they don't, they've taken in Jesus and so when they leave, they take Jesus with them. So many of our kids in the school have gone through confirmation here or have been baptized here. This December, the first Wednesday of Advent during the chapel service, we're going to baptize two young girls. Earlier in the year, I baptized three girls that were about to become part of the school. Is, is I met with some other parents, their children were baptized. And so whether it's confirmation or the stepping, the face stepping stone of having that opportunity to, to learn about the Lord's Supper and take that for the first time, which we just had recently, all these are opportunities for the kids and the parents to take Jesus out with them. It doesn't matter where they go to high school, they're taking Jesus with them. Maybe when they're done with high school, maybe they'll go into the military. Maybe they go to college. Maybe they go into the workforce. They're taking Jesus with them. That which God has enriched, the store seeds that he has put in place, he will make sure the harvest continues to be enlarged. And so I want to thank you for your support of the school. And I want you to give thanks for the school as well as all of our ministry partners. And it sounds like they're all coming in from lunch. And that's a wonderful sound to hear. So many kids, so many voices, talking, having fun, and walking through life with Jesus in their heart. So God bless, and we have one more stop. So let's go. Okay, our last stop. I'm going to start with the scripture text there, again from 2 Corinthians, with verse 12, where we hear these words. This service, Paul writes, that you perform is not only supplying the needs of the Lord's people, but it is also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. Many expressions of thanks to God. You know, from the early beginning of the Christian church, and how the word went out and it went from city to city with missionaries and people's lives were changed and transformed by that gospel message of Jesus. You know, that's an amazing thing when we think about all of a sudden you've got all these people in Macedonia, all these people in Corinth and other areas and towns, other, other places where Christians were gathering together, giving this wonderful offering, gathering it up, and sending it off to people in need. I wanted to end out here at the fireplace. This is, a, as you can see, there's a, a little bit of a, a block here, but really it's about a 12 foot in diameter across um, fire pit, huge fire pit. Youth come out here sometimes and have the opportunity to just sit around a campfire. What a wonderful thing to be able to do. It reminds me also of how this started. Again, 1912. And look where we are today, not because of our own work, but because of God's work. Just like the church in Macedonia 
in Corinth and how they took care of other people and how we are stepping in the lives of other people through our ministry partners, through the school, and through your every day living out your life, using your time, talent, and treasures to God's glory. There's a lot to be thankful for. Again, that scripture that I just read a moment ago, how it ends with those words, overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. You know, there's people that come from other countries that aren't like us here in America, but they just want a chance for something new. And in many ways, it's like this fire pit. They have walked through fire and trouble to get here. Maybe that's what they experienced in their own country was actually fire upon fire upon fire. I had the opportunity to talk to Antoine. He's from Haiti. And you know what Haiti's been through. I don't need to go through it. You know, earthquakes, president shot, uh, another big earthquake, you know, that they just had recently. Uh, no government, no justice, no work, shortage of food, and those people continue on trying their best. Antoine became a Christian at 17 when he was in Haiti. And he just wants a better life for his daughter, who's in fourth grade, and for his son, who is in second grade. He wants to have them have the opportunities that he doesn't have and couldn't have in Haiti, and the opportunities yet he sees here that we have. And you know what? We want to celebrate that with him. I sat down and I interviewed him. I just want to encourage you that after you have watched this devotion, I'm going to wrap up here in a minute, to go... And he's a little hard to understand, but I try to repeat back what he said and, and help everybody understand. Just listen to what he said and how the things are so different in his country with just the few questions that I ask him. He has walked through fire, but he wasn't alone. Jesus was with him. And Jesus is still with him and his daughter and his son and with you and with me. Man, we have so much to be thankful for. I, I asked at the end of the interview, I said uh, to the kids and to, and to Anton, I said, what are you thankful for this Thanksgiving? I know Thanksgiving is not a Haitian holiday, but what are you thankful for? I, I, his, his son said he's thankful for the world that we live in. That's a great answer for a second grader. His daughter, who's in fourth grade, is thankful for the family that she is a part of, for her brother and for her dad. And, and what a great thing to be thankful for. And when I asked Antoine what his answer was, he was thankful to be able to come to church and bring his children and pray. Think about that for a moment. It wasn't to be here in America. It wasn't for more food on his table than he had in Haiti. It wasn't for the justice or the police or some of the other things that they don't have in Haiti for a government. And do we have our problems here in the United States? Sure we do. But when we look at other countries, we look at what's happening in Haiti, his thankfulness was for the ability to come to church and bring his children to church and to pray. Wow. I'm not sure I've really thought about that. I think it's one of those things that I've taken for granted. Maybe it's one of the things that you've taken for granted too. But this Thanksgiving, I pray that we remember that sometimes here in this world, we walk through fire like this fire pit, just like Antoine did with his kids. But we are never, ever alone. And as he was thankful to God, we too are thankful. I leave you with these words once again as you gather this Thanksgiving. 
to remember to be thankful for not only supplying the needs of the Lord's people, but is also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. Those words of Paul, the many overflowing, many expressions of thanks be to God. Expressions of thanks, like you'll hear from Antoine if you watch his video. God bless you. Have a happy Thanksgiving, and we'll see you soon.